Well, I started recording my round three match. Uh, you know, in case you skip the deck tech. The deal is, we were 2-0 in a league. I started recording round three. And, uh, yeah, my, my stuff just stopped working, I guess. So, we won that match against Pascal Maynard playing some weirdo black-red token deck. Uh, it was close, though. And we're here for round four, so currently 3-0 in this league. And we are land light. We are light on the lands. But we're also in there. I'm going to get green-white and then play out the hangfather. All right, now we have Abzan Charm. Should be able to draw some crads. Maybe make some land drops. All that good stuff. And our opponent is not doing anything. <clears throat> Interesting. This is a bold strategy. Let's see if it works out for him. And I'm pretty sure drawing cards are just better than ticking up the hanger back. We use our mana better. Boss is Das, hang father of your own. Okay, so we're we playing against Eldrazi Ramp. What's going on here? So, what do we want? A black red land, I guess? What if Foothills gets basically all the lands in our deck? So, bust up this Bloodstained Mire. And do I want to Reef Soul that hanger back right now? I kind of want to. If our opponent is the Eldrazi's, then I want to I want to kill that hanger back before it gets out of control. I think I'm even willing to trade my hanger back for his Thopter, because Thopter represents four points of damage. So now we've shown him that we have Tassiger. So yeah, probably should have just attacked first. Man, he's gonna like Nissa's pilgrimage. Yeah. So this matchup was kind of tough. I thought it was gonna be really bad. Uh, actually, it is not terrible. Which is kind of surprising. All right. So do we Nissa this turn, or do we just activate Tasker to try and pick something up? I think we just Tasker it up. Still not blocking, that's dangerous, because I'm not sure when when you're going to try and block. Uh, you might as well do it now before I draw into another crappy removal spell. Alright, so our opponent is recovering from their, their turn 2 skip turn quite nicely. And we're kind of off to the races here. No mountain. Curious. Pick up a Duress and a Soren, not too bad. So I probably want to avoid committing to the board. Oh, well, maybe not. If our opponent's giving us Duress, that might mean they don't have Ugin. Okay, we're just scared of Soren for some reason. Uh, I will take your Ugin, I believe. We got a little Boo Hulamog just chilling out. Need to watch out for that one. And we need to find an Abzan Char maybe to kill this Ulamog. So also on this turn, we'll probably play Nissa. I think it's better to just attack with hanger back than <clears throat> when taking it up. I could be wrong about that though. I feel like we just want to get in our damage. Because we're going to get Ulamog in a couple turns, and it feels like... feels like Angerback is probably one of the cards that they're going to want to remove. Or Exile, as it were. 
So thankfully opponent is a mana short. Ooh, Mog. So we're safe for a turn. So we get to get in a pretty big attack, but they get to gain seven life, which kind of fogs us. Uh, then they're going to Ulamog some stuff. Uh, we are going to play Atarka and then see Drino. So attack for eight, put you to 11. Eh, maybe we play Atarka this turn. So then you have to exile that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's got to be better to do that. Because if he hits me once with Ulamog, then this Atarka has no value. So I think it is better to Atarka this turn, make 4-4. Four, four. He'll probably exile uh, Atarka and Hanger back, maybe, and then we can attack all out for four damage. Put him to seven, Rhino him down to four. That might be able to work. Maybe draw a card off Nissa. So just no, no mountain in my opponent's deck. Foundry of the Consoles is interesting. Wonder if that's better than spawning bed. Spawning bed seems better. Bed er. I am so clever. Yeah, maybe it's a Tarka and Nissa. Maybe maybe they're worried about me drawing answers. Yep, okay. So now we get to attack for six. Ruinous path, that's probably gonna help. 4-4 four, four, Haster. Uh, might actually get to play Rhino and Tasker this turn. I assume that he's going to block Tasker. Because in theory it is the better card. Although I think blocking a Shia is probably better. Yeah. So now I just get to go wide around my opponent it looks like. This worked out well. Yeah, I feel like they should have probably exiled Hanger back instead of Nissa, and then blocked a Shia instead of Tassiger. They would have been in a slightly better spot. They do get to draw some cards. Certainly have Foundry available if they want that. Uh, Rhino does trample though, and I have this 4-4 Haste Land from Ruinous Path. I can just target Ulamog with Ruinous Path even though it won't kill it. I will still get my 4-4. Or, you know, you can just make Thopter's main phase for no good reason. I'll just kill one of those. That's fine, too. Get that F6 value. Uh, I guess maybe Ulamog is back on D? Unless they have something else? Nope. So, yeah, maybe just back on D. So that I don't even have to show them my, my 20 precious cards. Well, we did not hit our land drop, so we can't make a haste land, but we can still kill them. They weren't actually... Oh, they're at two. So yeah, they were actually dead, but we could still... Well, now I drew Radiant Flames, so I could just Flames for two. Which would kill my hanger back, but kill them, so yeah. Whatever. Whatever works. So I like the duresses, stop the ramp spells, Evo leaps uh, to get around Ulamog a little bit, and maybe sack my hanger back if I want to. I like Painful Truth and ob obsy wobsy here. Uh, do not like the Sweepers. Don't like the crappy removal. Uh, Ruinous Path kills Ulamog. Or not Ulamog. Ugin. Ugin. Kills Ugin. Not kill Ulamog. Eh, I think we can side out Sorin. Eh, that looks pretty good to me. These hanger backs are chilling out like fireballs. They go in the two drop slot. We all know that. And yeah, that looks good to me. So, uh, build this deck and join this league before the Grand Prix actually concluded. And as it turns out, I have like a reasonable number of things to sideboard in and out. So it just kind of kind of works out that way. Sounds pretty nice. Uh, I think the key is like 
holding Abzan Charm or making sure you, you can like DP an Abzan Charm uh, to make sure you can kill Ulamog. Uh, kind of the same deal with Ru Ruinous Path and Ugin, but you can actually just beat Ugin by having things like Hangerback Walker, so. Hangerback Walker, Face Down, Den Protector, Catacomb Siftar. And our opponent is not doing a whole lot. Uh, so we can Painful Truths for three and then discard a card. I think that's more important than taking up Hangerback. Probably just discard this Evolving Wilds. Well, now I kind of want another green mana. Because I drew the Evo Leap. Uh, so what can we do next turn? Well, four mana, so we can play Hanger Back, play Evo Leap, attack for one. Uh, or we could try and finagle some situation where we get to play Tassiger. So maybe we discard Shambling Vent, keep the Evolving Wild, because we're probably not going to need multiple Shambling Vents. And Wilds is an extra card for Tasker, so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Shambling Vents, technically a better card, but ultimately, what does that really matter? Alright, so we can go Wilds, Tasker. I guess I like that plan. We want green mana for Evo Leap. And given that we have a clock, our opponent's stumbling, we have Absent Charm and Ruinous Path, I feel like it's going to be really hard for our opponent to win this game. So let's grind. Let's I'll start, I guess. We want a shrine. Yeah, it's like the normal card to get, I think. So we got some beaters. And opponent can't sweep us for a while. So there's really no reason to play out the Evo Leap quite yet. Now is our opponent just dead? 4, 8, 9, 10? Yeah. Unless they have Colorless Fog. Gotta watch out for the Colorless Fog. Boom! Eldrazi Ramp. Get out of here. You stink. Uh, more like they stink when they don't they do not do what their deck is trying to do, which is like make land drops and whatnot. So that was kind of an awkward match, but uh, still kind of shows you how you can actually beat Ulamog and friends.